Hi, I'm Bob French. I want to talk about something that is both one of the absolutely foundational ideas of finance, but that's also wildly misunderstood by pretty much everything, which actually sums up much of the field of finance now that I come to think of it. What I want to talk about is the efficient market hypothesis, or EMH for short. This idea, which was developed by Gene Fama at the University of Chicago, makes a pretty straightforward claim that the financial markets incorporate all available information into security prices. This is essentially the null hypothesis of finance. Even the people arguing against it pretty much take the EMH as the starting point, and the burden is on them to prove that the markets aren't efficient in whichever way they're looking at. So let's break this statement down. What does it actually mean to say that the financial markets incorporate all available information into security prices? Well, to start off, it does not mean that the financial markets are perfect. Market prices are not dictated from on high. They're based on tens of thousands of people making their own decisions and trading billions of dollars of securities trying to get it right. They've all got their money on the line, so they truly do care about how much Netflix is actually worth. If Netflix is currently trading for less than you think it's worth based on your estimates, then you're going to go out and start buying Netflix stock. And if enough people agree with you, then Netflix's stock price will start coming up to a more appropriate level. And if the stock price then goes up too much, then you'll start selling off the stock that you just bought, driving the price back down. Now, I want to stop for a second here and emphasize this. What I just described is how markets work. Whatever happened in the markets today or yesterday or last year is an aggregation of individual traders choosing to buy and sell securities based on what they think each security is worth. The market price of Netflix or anything else is just the last price that two people agreed to trade it at. And crucially, both people were happy with that price. Otherwise, the trade would not have happened. Now, this doesn't mean that the market is right in some platonic sense. Just that given the information that's currently available, this is the market's best guess about what Netflix should be trading at. And that proviso about current information is key because it's why markets move. As we get new information, in the form of, well, news, as well as everyone's expectations about the future, everyone's continually updating their price estimates. All of this new information that we're constantly being bombarded with is being fed into everyone's models. Whether it's some massive algorithm that took a team of PhDs to design or just your gut feeling about a company. And it's not just about whether the news is good or bad on its face. What matters is how the new information squares with what people expected to happen. There are tons of examples you can point to of companies that made huge profits over the previous year or quarter, but their stock price dropped because they didn't make quite as massive of a profit as everyone expected. So what this means is that to reliably beat the market, you have to either have access to information that other people don't, or you need to have a crystal ball that actually works. Now, that reliably is doing a lot of work there. There are always going to be people who beat the market over pretty much any given time frame. The thing is, though, they're beating the market because they're getting lucky rather than any particular skill in investing that they might have. There are a bunch of really cool studies called persistence studies that look at whether winners repeat. If you were a manager who beat the market in one period, however you wanted to find that, how likely are you to beat the market again in this next period? Now, I'll do a deeper dive on the topic in another video because it's a really interesting topic. 
But the short answer is that winning in one period doesn't tell you all that much about, any, about winning in that next period. Winners simply don't repeat. Now, the trick is that there are simply so many people out there trying to beat the market that some of them will get lucky for a few years in a row and make it look like they know what they're doing. Now, there are a few things to keep in mind as you're thinking about market efficiency. The first is that it can't really be tested. There's something called the joint hypothesis problem. Essentially, if you were to test the efficient market hypothesis, you would need a model per to predict what the price of a security should be. But think this through. If that model doesn't accurately predict the future, is that because markets aren't efficient or because the model isn't a good model? There's really no way of definitively knowing that. So this means that we can't know in the strict sense of the word that markets are actually efficient. Instead, we need to look at the weight of the evidence. And well, it's pretty hefty. You should also be keeping in mind that the efficient market hypothesis is just a model. And as Fama always likes to point out, every interesting model is wrong. There may very well be market inefficiencies out there. Momentum is a really interesting area, but it's very hard to tease out what's actually real, what is compensation for risk, even if we don't really understand what that risk truly is behind the scenes, and what's noise in the data, or data mining, depending on how charitable you want to be. Well, this is all really interesting to think about, and I really do mean that. What does this actually mean for how you should invest? Well, first off, stock picking and just generally trying to beat the market does not work. So don't do that. What you want to do is make the market your ally. You want to focus on making sure that your investments are based on the fundamental risk and return relationships that underlie the financial markets. In other words, generally index funds and other funds that are specifically trying to capture specific risk and return relationships rather than trying to beat the market. You want to use these to build a portfolio that you can stick with and that will help you stay disciplined to so that you can stay invested to harvest the long-term returns that the markets put on offer. It seems strange to say that simply sitting back tends to lead to better outcomes over time than going out and trying to beat the market and figure everything out, doing something. But the data is pretty clear. The markets are largely efficient. So all that extra work and expense will just make you worse off in the long run. If this was helpful, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can see what we're up to. If you have any questions on this or any other questions that you'd like me to address, just drop them in the comments below. You can also check us out on the web at retirementresearcher.com and make sure to sign up for our weekly newsletter to keep up to date with everything that we're doing.